Okay, and now let's speak a little bit more specifically about uh, who the players are. Uh, you no, know, we had our X and our Y and our individual. Uh, now, this is a term, U.S. shareholder, which of course sounds like a general term, but that expression, U.S. shareholder, has a specific meaning within the context of subpart F, and it will also have a specific meaning in the context of guilty uh, later on uh, when we get to that. U.S. shareholder is any U.S. person that owns 10% or more of the voting power or value of the foreign corporation. Now, as you can imagine, especially in a large corporate group, the U.S. parent might own 500 or 1,000, uh, you know, ultimately foreign subsidiaries. Well, it is a U.S. shareholder with respect to each one that is treated under the entity classification rules as a corporation. Now, notice this uh, part where we say ownership takes into account shares directly owned or shares indirectly owned or shares constructively owned. Now, I, I, I know that uh, uh, maybe not uh, too many uh, uh, of you in this classroom have uh, children, but you probably all have parents. If you own shares, now, now we're talking about constructively owned. If you own shares, is your parent considered to own the shares that you own? Yeah, you, that, and that's, that's true, but you have to be careful and go through the steps to determine that. Why? Because there's, there's a number of sections in the code which give you constructive ownership rules. There's 267, sometimes uh, where constructive ownership is important, they tell you to go to the constructive ownership rules of section 267. In some cases, they tell you to, which is the case for uh, subpart F, to the constructive ownership rules in uh, 318. Uh, you've got to go through the steps. Uh, if you look at, in this case, 958, it tells you some modifications of the constructive ownership rules in 318. So you've got to go through the steps. Now, one of the changes that was made in, uh, in uh, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was that they extremely broadened the constructive ownership rules. So if you had a situation uh, like this, okay, let's say that uh, the foreign parent owns 60% of, uh, of Y, let's uh, add a name to it, and X owns 40%. Now, you're going to find out uh, in a couple of minutes that to be a CFC, Y has to be more than 50% owned by U.S. persons. Well, one of the changes from the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act was to expand the constructive ownership rules so that X is considered to own the shares owned by its foreign parent. So Y, under old rules, would not be a CFC would not be a controlled foreign corporation, but now it is because of these constructive ownership rules. So the constructive ownership rules are important from this standpoint of who is a shareholder and how much do they, are they considered to own for testing the 
uh, U.S. or the uh, ownership of Y for the CFC classification. So, again, you know, this directly, indirect ownership, constructive ownership. Be aware that those rules are there and that they may require some detailed examination where you're not looking at a vanilla U.S. parent, 100% subsidiary. If you're looking at joint ventures or you're looking at a ultimately foreign parent, uh, this can this can be very uh, significant. And you can find a uh, CFC status where you would not have otherwise expected it. This has been a major controversy uh, since the uh, the tax uh, uh, the Tax Act was passed. For a foreign corporation to be considered a controlled foreign corporation, it's that even multiple U.S. shareholders, it can be owned more than 50 percent. So it's not really controlled. Well, uh, yeah, you're, persons. yeah, you're, uh, you're asking the right question. Uh, let's let's now go to. Uh, uh, let's first draw a picture, and then we'll go to the uh, to the slide. Let's take a relatively vanilla situation, but uh, still uh, uh, still uh, not the vanilla situation of one parent and one hundred percent owned subsidiary. Let's say that we have that's five. Let's for simplicity, let's say that they each have twenty percent. Last time I looked, 20 times 5 was, uh, was 100. Now, each of these five are U.S. shareholders because they own over 10 per, I'm sorry, they own 10 percent or more. If you haven't figured it out yet, the issue of, you know, is it 10 percent or more? or is it 50% or more, or is it over 50%? Uh, you know, what does the law say? <laughs> You've got to look at it specifically. Okay, in this case, 10% or more is that definition of U.S. shareholder. So all of these five are U.S. shareholders. Okay, now that leads us to, uh, your, to the definition of of uh, CFC, okay, any foreign corporation that is more than 50% owned by vote or value by U.S. shareholders, by U.S. shareholders. So even though no one of those five shareholders actually controls this uh, company Y, in you know, in our example, it meets this test because it's controlled by U.S. persons. It doesn't matter that you have to add them together. It doesn't matter that no one really controls it. And if they're not related, first. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh. If that they are unrelated. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm assuming they're unrelated in that oh. uh, in that diagram. Now, if they were related, then you get back to your indirect or constructive ownership rules, and you might say, gee, it's 100%. But they don't have to be related. Uh, let's go back to our, uh, to our picture. Now, let's pretend that there's not five owning 20% each, but rather there are 11 owners, each owning 9%. Is that a CFC? None of them are U.S. shareholders. Yeah, exactly. None of them are U.S. shareholders. They are not 10% or greater owners. Now, in this kind of situation, maybe you have uh, four that own uh, let's say 10%, uh, okay, there's U.S. shareholders that own 40%, but that's not over 
but wait a second. What if, <laughs> what if you don't want to own 10% and somebody drops off and you thought you only owned 8.7% of the whatever, but then somebody... Well, that's a good question. Like how you can let's, okay, that. let's say that, in fact, uh, company uh, X here, let's say that company X goes through a redemption of several of its shareholders. No, you're right. If there is a redemption, and now we have, let's say, a redemption of just one person, you know, one of them. We now have 10 shareholders, each of whom owns 10% or more. And now we're into subpart M. So yes, that's exactly right. These are black line, uh, hard, or I should say not black line, bright line rules. Subpart F throughout it. Uh, is objective, bright line rules, which you look at and you might say, gee, do they really make a lot of sense? Well, not always, but the idea was to have one system that applies to all, you know, all foreign companies owned by U.S. persons. So in that instance, then it would not be a foreign people? With 11 owners, each owning 9% roughly, it would not be. But they have a redemption of one of the owners, then it becomes a CFC because now your tests are met. 10% or greater U.S. shareholder and uh, over 50% are by U.S. shareholders. Now if one of the 11 sold their shares to somebody else, you still have 11 owning, you know, a roughly 9%. So it would continue to not be a CFC. Now let's, uh, let's do one other example before we go on to the, the next area. Let's say that we have a joint venture company, which is owned one by a U.S owner and one by non-US and let's say it's 50-50. Now on the surface is that a CFC? Right, it's not. It is not over 50%. Now can we just stop at this point or do we have to maybe ask a question or two and look at something? Because you know in the tax world it is not the rules that are so important, in a sense. The factual background, the factual information about this whole situation is what's important. And then you apply the law to that factual situation. So what if we looked at the, uh, at the, uh, memorandum of uh, incorporation or other corporate documents and the U.S. owner had some sort of ability, for example, to break any tie, you know, where there's disagreement between the owners. Does that sound like uh, control? Uh, yeah, probably is. And there's some discussion in the regulations which look at this kind of thing. So you can't, you know, you can't apply these rules just from the standpoint of, gee, this is the rule that's there. You've got to first know the factual situation and then apply the rules to uh, whatever the factual situation is. Does it work in reverse? Does what like, work in reverse? <laughs> so if the, uh, so maybe they had 51%, but in actuality they didn't have control because? Uh, I would say that uh, the answer is no, and the reason is 
if we go back to our slide, it says, is more than 50% owned by vote or value? Okay, the, you might well have a situation where the, the ownership of number of shares is, you know, 60, 40. But because of the organizational documents, the 60% really does not have control. You could certainly have that situation. So you would not get uh, kicked out of CFC status, you're still covered. 